key to getting a good programming job is experience. Maybe you have good grades, you got letters of recommendation, but you haven't done much hands-on professional grade programming that you can use to actually demonstrate the skills that you're gonna need on the job. So today I wanna to talk about how you actually build up your resume to make you more marketable when you go on the job market. First of all, why do we need experience? And the reason is, is just because you have a degree in computer science or computer engineering doesn't mean you're a good programmer. I wish it did, but it's possible for people to scrape by C's in their classes and be a pretty average mediocre programmer when they graduate. Some people also take tests really well and given enough time, they're, they're able to put passable programming together in order to get decent grades in their projects. And that doesn't mean that they've really taken the time to master their craft. And employers know this. Anyone that's hired very many college students knows that you're taking a risk when you hire somebody right out of school. So they're gonna be looking for ways beyond courses, beyond your transcript. They're gonna be looking for things that show them, that demonstrate that you are a good programmer. So today I wanna to give you three ideas for how you can build up your marketability, you can actually build up your resume and be a stronger candidate when you go on the job market. So the first idea is to have a code portfolio. This is something that they, they do a lot in other fields. I'm surprised how many computer programmers and computer scientists, computer engineers don't do this. Basically, you just need to collect code that you've written so that you have something in a format that you can actually send to employers. Make sure it's good code, make sure it's clean, make sure it's readable because sending them bad code is gonna be far worse than not sending them any code at all. But this is a way for you to say, look, this is what I've done. It shows confidence, it tells them this person does stuff and they can actually look through it, they can run it. Do make sure it compiles, make sure it runs. Not everybody that you give your portfolio to is actually going to test out the code, but some will and you wanna make sure it actually works. You wanna make sure it's well documented because they're going to to judge you as a prospective employee based on how your code looks and how they would feel if they had to take on that code in the workplace. But a code portfolio alone is probably not enough because it's probably just stuff that you've done in your classes. You really need to get some kind of external out of class experience. One way, the most traditional way to do this is through an internship. I'm not gonna talk too much about this because students tend to get pretty good advice on internships. You're basically going to work for a company for a few months. They hopefully will like you. Hopefully they'll, they'll get a chance, they get a chance to test out your skills, see if they actually wanna hire you. At the end of it, if all went well, they're probably gonna offer you a job. If they can't offer you a job or if you wanna work somewhere else, they probably are also a letter of recommendation and they can talk about things that you've done that's practical, that actually makes a difference, that's helped their business and this is a great thing to have. My third idea is often overlooked by students and that is to contribute to open source. The open source community is full of projects that need code. They depend on volunteer code, but if you are willing to supply high quality code that serves their needs, they don't care how young you are or how inexperienced you are, they're gonna take that code. They're also going to vet it first. Most decent open source projects are not going to accept garbage and that's actually a good thing for you. What this means is that if you can successfully get your code into, code ba into a code base of one of these projects, it means that you can actually put on your resume that you contribute in a way that another community found satisfactory. So another community said, yes, this code was good enough to actually put into their code base. Now, of course, the project you choose matters. This is not gonna mean much if you contribute to an open source project that has a programmer community of yourself and maybe your buddies. That's just not gonna mean much because what does the vetting mean? On the other hand, it's gonna be very useful if you pick an open source project that produces software that people actually use. Contributing fixes to the Linux kernel, to Chromium, to Firefox, to Apache, all these, these are really big projects. You don't need to pick a project that has millions of users or that's on every machine in the country. Really the point is, is you just need to pick a project that has a critical mass. You know, maybe it, maybe it services a small community. Maybe there are only a hundred developers involved in this. Maybe there are only 10. The point is, is if it's a community that actually produces code that people actually use, then it's gonna be good for your resume. It's gonna be meaningful and it's worth pursuing. One other thought is you probably wanna pick a project that relates to the kind of job you eventually wanna get. If you wanna do web development, some kind of web dev type project is a good idea. If you wanna do low level programming, a more low, lo low level project is a good idea. This isn't critical, it's not essential, but it's it's a good idea. If, if you can pick and choose, it's a good idea to pick something that, that fits your goals. And so that's it for today, folks. I hope this helps the students out there who are planning for their future to think about things that you can do to build your credibility, build your marketability, and to have a more successful career. And with that, I will sign off and I'll see you later.